Yeah. And this old barn here sits a car that was manufactured in 1986. And in 86, it was faster than the Corvette, Camara, Firebird, Mustangs, almost two seconds faster than the Monte Carlo SS. What I'm trying to tell you is, in 86, it was the fastest production car in America, period. And it left a lot of auto manufacturers just kind of scratching the head. You know, they help me understand what just happened, basically. This here is my 1986 Buick Grand National. It's a real deal, fellas. Of course, it doesn't run and hasn't run in 20 plus years. So I'm gonna do the right thing, try to get this thing fired up again and drive it 400 miles back home. Seems fine. Nope, parts are impossible to find. <laughs> Perfect. Now, for me personally, Grand Nationals have been on my bucket list, well, since I was a kid. As you know, I'm a huge Buick fan, and these absolutely shattered the mold and basically forced the automotive industry to just go into a panic there for about a decade. Now, these bring a pile of money in excellent condition, or even fair condition, hence why I bought this one. <laughs> it just is what it is. I actually bought it sight unseen. Well. I saw a couple photographs and yep, take it. But this is the first time that I'm seeing it in daylight in person and actually able to hook my peepers on this thing. And what's cool about this rig is I'm just the third owner of this vehicle and the previous owner was a little old lady and the story goes, she just drove it back and forth to town the whole time she owned it for errands and groceries and whatever. Rocked up a ton of miles, parked it and got a new car. Well, the new car took precedence. That was parked in the garage and unfortunately, this car sat outside in front of the garage in the elements for about 19 years. Now my buddy can pick this car up for me and put it in this location. This is actually his barn here and he actually owns the bank up front, which I'll walk you through here in a minute as well. So I could come up to Cincinnati and eventually get to work on this thing. I think the first thing a guy's got to do is there's some dolly thingies over here and an old jack. Let's move it to the front of the barn here so a guy can walk all the way around this rig. Let's drink it up a little bit. I don't know. Let's hook peepers on it. See what I'm getting into. I've never. This is. I've never worked on one of these. So that's <laughs> that's great. Nope. It's gonna be. It's gonna be a long couple days. I have a feeling. Guys got some great news. Two of the four tires hold wind. <laughs> that's that's fine. Terrible news, the matching go-kart is not for sale. Dang it. Anywho, guys got her scooted off the wall. We can find the gander on the whole rig here. Let's just walk around and drink her up. We're gonna start in the trunk, but in order to do that, I need the keys. The keys are actually in the safe in the old bank. Yeah, that's all of that is real, actually. So let's walk up there, see if we can find these keys, and I think the title even. That'd be, that'd be nice. So this is really cool. Citizens Deposit Bank, built in 1926. My buddy bought this to get the land and the building behind it. And uh, he put the paperwork and keys in here. <laughs> Look at the safe. How cool is this? Oh, this is so heavy. Wow. Bosler Safe Co. Hamilton, Ohio, actually. So it's a local safe ish. Man, this thing has got to be two feet deep. 
kind of funny. You always see in the movies where they just stick some putty on it and poof, and the door comes open. Nope. Look at how many different rods go through this thing. And the gears and the levers. It's got the, the wind digital things on it. Look how deep this thing is. That's the guy's arm, for Pete's sake. And then it's got digitals on the front even too. Pretty wild. Jeez. Shock sensor, motion sensors. Look at all the inspections. 1973, 60, 62, 46, 40. That's really cool. Hello. I think that might have went outside actually. This is like a counting door. If you come in here and count your stuff, you can lock this one. That might be a mag lock actually. And then here's the safes. Pretty neat. <laughs> Little viewing people. Well, you can hear the concrete. This thing is solid. I have to say this is a first in a vehicle buying experience. Master key is already in and turned. And then my key. There we go. Well, I guess when my buddy said the paperwork was safe. Yeah, see what I, yeah, I don't know. Someone's got to bring the dad jokes. Let's check this out. Don't want to show names here, obviously, respect their privacy, but you can see here it was titled, this title, in 1992, which is when the lady bought it. She paid $10,200, and it had 23,000 miles on it when she purchased it in July of 1992. Before then, the feller lived in Cincinnati. She lived in Mason, so it's been an Ohio car its entire life. High performance kit, Buick Regal T-Type and Grand National. Well, here's all the T-Types. Stage four, quarter mile, anywhere from 14.7 to 13.2. Zero to 60 fellers in 4.4 seconds. This is really cool. All the part numbers and prices. Stainless steel exhaust kit, 600 bucks. That's really neat. Really cool that that came with it. I know some of you younger fellers are thinking, zero to 60 and 4.4, there's cars that do it in three and a half now or 3.9. We're talking 1986. Parachute pants and stuff. This thing was knocking mullets off and breaking hearts before you fellas was even born, most of you. It was just impressive what these cars could do. And of course, 87, it just got even better. Bear rug. Okay, I'm going to lock up. Let's get back to the National and get in the trunk, see what we got going on. How do I get out of here? I'm going to go on ahead and apologize straight away. Ain't got no electricities in here. So we ain't got any lights or plugins or whatever. It's probably a little bit darker than you're used to. We're just going to have to fight through it, you know. Hopefully we can get this outside pretty soon. Going to start in the trunk here. Tell us the story of the vehicle, you know. What if there's a water pump in here? Head gasket. On this one there could be, you know, it's, it's the boost parts. I don't know. Let's just take a look. Key doesn't work. Oh, it does. Can't see nothing. Oh, okay. All right. Let me get you in here. First glance, really pretty clean. Got to be honest, but I can't take it anymore. We got to dig into these RPOs here and make positively sure that this is actually a Grand National. I'm an absolute expert when it comes to RPO codes on Buick's. Nope, but I know enough to be dangerous, you know. Don't allow one, 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 don't know this one, don't allow one, don't allow that one. Ooh, G80. That's posi traction rear end in this bad boy. That was an option in 86, 87, 
standard equipment. Don't allow that one, don't allow that one, don't allow that one, don't allow that one. Ah, LC2. That, in fact, is the turbocharged 3.8 litre under the hood. LV2, Victor 2, would be the 5 litre with the 4 barrel. So great news so far. Don't allow that one, don't allow that one, don't allow that one, don't allow that one, don't allow that one. Don't know this one, don't know that one. Rear spoiler, don't know that one, don't know this one. WE2. Yes. There it is. WE2 is the Grand National Package, which, <laughs> that's what we got. Anyway, I'm so excited. I just can't hide it. I don't know how to dance. Let's uh, look in here a little bit more. No engine parts. I'm liking that. I don't like this. That looks like it was probably an old school uh, CD compact disc changer. Why would an old lady have that, right? So that doesn't really add up. Although the old lady's name is on the title and all the paperwork. And I was hoping that it really was her car all those years because she would just baby the thing. But who knows, her kids could have got into it. Doesn't look like the Mises were in here. Quarter's never been wrecked or replaced. We got the original Sparage. Good year is is. And the original Jackage. She's tied in even yet. I don't know what that thing is. Look at the trunk floor. It's never had a fuel pump. And I could tell because of the way that the floor is. Not a big hole cut in it. This is great news. Pretty solid back here, really solid. But, ah, uh, yeah, see, mm-hmm. Gonna need some work on the deck lead. But no engine parts. We're off to a great start, verifiably an actual Grand National. Well, let's take a walk here. First thing I notice is the filler panel is gone. Super common on G-bodies, they just, they get well, they do this. They just explode, basically. Not a big deal. You can still find those, thankfully. Here I could see July of 02, I think it said, but I just brushed most of it off with my finger. We got tail lips, a right one and a left one. Bumper's in good shape. A little bit of rust on the, you know, the thingy do dabs. This side looks like the bow of the Titan. I not even sure what's going on here. This side obviously got walloped on as far as the weather goes. A little bit of surface rust back there. Got the original wheel and hub cappage. Missing the trim strips. Those are just adhesive back and they go down pretty often. A little bit of rust there unfortunately. It's coming through where the seam there Bottom of the door, nothing too terribly bad. Frame looks pretty solid. When I had the back end jacked up before I was moving it, it still has a plastic identification tab on the frame in there. That was really cool to see. Paint is just about brand new, you know, on the rig. I bet it's still clean up though, a little bit, you know. Missing the hub capital there. BF Goodrich's rattle toss. Now well, they're, I don't know, drier than Bob Barker's back. I don't know, this, is, this one's holding some wind. That one's still holding wind. The others aren't. Badges are in great shape, actually. Hard to tell, but I'm not really seeing any dents. That's pretty neat. Of course, we got the turbo hood on there. Filler panel's gone on the front. Same thing. Crispier than KFC, kapoof gone. You don't even know it. 86 grill, all black, 87 went to the chromes. You know, up here. We got headlight center still. Got a plate, might could get us home. We'll see. We got hubcap on this side, but it's missing the center sticker doodab. Badge is still on it. Definitely the Craigslist side over here you know no rust on the front and yeah we're getting some, it's getting a little rusty over there but notice the doors and the rockers are much better on this side 
and it doesn't have all the lichens, slight lichens, smart mold, mosses on this side. I don't know if you could tell, but this tire's got a hole in it somewhere. It must be a screw or a nail over here, but the wind was escaping. So that BF Little Red Rattle Toss is down. Same story with the hubcap later. Center thing is gone. I don't know if someone came over and boop, you know, tied her out. That almost looks like it may have been painted. It's interesting. Probably not going to be able to tell until we get it really cleaned up, you know. But again, no big dents or anything like that. Get your scan here. Scan with me. Scanning. Scanning. Looking pretty good. Sun burned up here. Again, kind of hard to tell what's going on. Might have had a spray on her. You know, glass seems to be doing glassy things. You know, it's it's doing the stuff. Got the sport mirror option. It'd be manual on this side. There should be a knob on the other side. You know, that's how you move the mirror is what I'm saying. You can see the nationals. Headrest this is. Man, this is cool. All right, let's jump in this thing. See what the cabin looks like. Turbo. Yep. Oh. Yeah. I'd say 20 years is accurate. Oh. It smells like a sweaty shoe full of dirt and old mayonnaise. It's not bad. It's not bad at all. Wow. Purelator filter in here or something. That's, um, well, I suppose they ain't got no battery. Can't get the windows down. Full length council. That was another RPO. Let me get you in here. Boop, boop. Little black Buick. Boop, ba -da -ba -da -da -da. World famous G and A body issue. Albeit, this one's not that bad. They just like the leak. The water's on a guy. Look, first glance, just, it's not that bad, really. Too bad about the sun. See the back seat and whatnot. Yeah, sport mirror package, so we can move her around there. We got digital windows, digital locks, seats, great shape, digital seat. Headliners, it ain't headlining, she's down. Looking like a full diaper in the back there. That's okay. Carpets, well, hard to see. But it's not that bad, I don't think. Council's in good shape. Doesn't look like it was smoked in. Got the fancy radio with the tape deck. Got the ACs in here. Of course, that was part of the package. Pretty nice. The 86 has had a black pole strap, you know, and then 87s, they were gray. Other than the grill and this, there really was no, I mean, engineering wasn't really engineering. Other stuff, other than the engines, I don't think. Nothing really changed. These seats are in fantastic shape, at least the front ones. We got a, let me get a light. A little better. You got a pyrrolator box back there, floor mats, rear view mirror. See the carpet, really not that bad. No, there ain't even a heel mark poured into the floor. Pedals look halfway decent-ish. That must be the nitrous button. Honestly, I have no idea what that is. Kick panels, looking very kicky. I mean, they're there, sharp. Now, one of the reasons I got this in an affordable manner, it shows 32,679. Well, we know this is not a 32,000 mile car, clearly. It's 132,000 documented miles. So, you know, although this is one of my bigger purchases on the channel, it's still significantly less than other Grand Nationals out there. 
everything, all the plastic, like the gauges and everything, look sharp. There's the boost assist gauge and the ripums down in there. Shows three quarters tank of fuel. So a couple things there could absolutely just be wrong. Fuel gauge could be stuck or in hop. You know, it doesn't work. Or it could have three quarters tank of fuel. Now that's not necessarily a bad thing. Gasoline 20 years ago actually stayed gasoline longer, more gooder-ish than today's fuel. I fired up rigs that ran on old fuel like that. But there's a really good chance it's gonna be just, you know, varnish deck stain. We might try to pump some out, see what kind of condition that's in. Let's go ahead and uh, get in the power barn, see what we got going. Hopefully there's still an engine in there. There we go. Yep, yep, yeah. Whoa. <laughs> Got the old G body hood going on here. Hood proper later, 3000. Boop. Wow. Okay. All right. <laughs> uh, no idea what I'm looking at. That's, that's great. Yep. There it is. You got a sushi slicer underneath the barbecue grill there. Uh, Garrett Turbo. I don't really know what I'm looking at for sure, but everything looks to be factory. You know what I mean? We've got an air-to-air -air intercooler. Should be a small fan run off the crank down there. Charger later pipes. Stock intake over here. Cruise control. Still got the AC. Lions and the pump on it. That's going to be an issue. Mark my words, write them down now. The Buick Powermaster brake system. Look at this thing. You ever seen one of these contraptions? It's a digital electrotronic vacuum pump later brake boost system. I'm assuming because of the fear of changing vacuum pressure and in the intakes. You know what I mean? It doesn't have the actual vacuum booster. So they came up with this system, but everything that I've read over the years states that it either doesn't work, won't work, or will immediately fail on you. So that's nice. We'll be fighting that somehow. I'm sure we won't be able to find parts. I know for a fact that is unobtainium if it's bad. We have had some Mises in here. Not really terrible. It's a single wide trailer. Started eating away at the hood insulation, unfortunately. I think he had some stuff thrown down, mothballs and things like that. Oh no, got a fram in her down there, looks like. <clears throat> yep. Battery still in her. And it seems to be complete. The wires haven't been eaten through. I mean, we'll have to look at them closely, but all the lighting hoses are there as well. I don't know. Look at the rust on the snake belt even. Boy, it's gonna be tight working on this thing. Look, it's kinda of already got headers on it. See that design? You gotta flow the exhaust distances out. You know, we got digital juice shooters in here. It's uh, fuel injected. That's different. We've got zip ties in here on the injectors. I wonder what that, why is that happening? Hmm. I wonder if she's been into before, you know, kind of hard to say. Yeah, they're over here as well. Got some new style hose clamps. Throttle position sensor has been replaced. See that color plastic? That's newer. So she's been, you know, kept up on, I'd say, over the years before it was parked. Darn mice. I don't know what this is. Nothing blew up, I guess. Probably part of the boom boom system in the back or something like that. Oh boy, this is going to be interesting. Well, the fantastic news is everything seems to be here. I mean, I guess. I really don't know what I'm looking at. 
See, I stopped working on cars right around the 83, 84 area. Whenever they get the OBD2 Juan Kenobi plugins and all the digital computer boxes and boops and doodabs and whatnots, <laughs> I'm out. You know what I mean? I like a coffee can on top with a garden hose shoved through that hooked into a fuel tank somewhere. But this one's got it all. Not only do we got the beep boops and electro digitals and the fuel injectors, and it's got electro digital fuel pump in the back. That's probably not going to work. But it's also got a turb ski up front doing the boost assist, which means there's vacuum this and that, and air has to do special things. And also a big concern, parts. 93.74% of the parts that are above and beyond the 3.8 liter in like a general Regal, you can't, you can't really find them. I mean, in 86, there's 5,000 of these made approximately. All of the parts are gone. They're in some guy's shed in Nebraska, you know, or wherever, the, you, know, you, you know what I mean. But underneath all of the garbledy gook, I do know this. That is a push rod v6 gm engine if it rotates it'll run we're just gonna have to figure out fuel get that gotta get that in there somehow it's gonna need lightning to ignite that fuel and then hopefully it's got compression because well we're not going to do anything about that in here if we can get it running we'll worry about the transmission and then last because we probably won't be able to do anything about it brakes you know, and then like, I don't know, will the windows roll down? That would be nice. Tail lights, maybe. Air conditioning. Tape deck! That's on the list. I think where a guy wants to start is fuel delivery. You know, can we get fuel up here and do the injectors inject? In order to do that, we're going to need a battery. All the digital stuff in here. I guess we can turn this key forward and just see if the pump lights off. I really doubt it. I hope it does, but I doubt it. And then we could start troubleshooting from there. And if it does, well, then we're going to stop doing that and immediately drain what's in the tank because I don't want it, you know, going in up here. What is this? Auto craft assist. Hmm. Well, you're getting replaced right now. Yeah. Get out of here. Oh, that exploded. When a guy runs a Terpsky car, you got to have a very special battery. No, nope. this is the Econoline. It's the cheapest, and it's got a go handle. There. Slid right in, didn't you, little fella? All right, fresh batteries in it. Step one. Well, I guess the key's got to go forward. Heard a relay click. I'll be dipped. Yeah, let's get that down. Who knows if it'll come back up. Passenger. Yeah. Slow, but it's going. All right. Before a guy gets much farther here, we need to make sure this engine rotates. Our guys just... You know, we'd have to switch gears quickly and start digging into this thing. That's a whole mess. Now, normally a guy likes to get a wrench down on the crankshaft or even a pry bar on the flywheel or something and try to rotate it manually slowly just in case something is bound up. We're not going to cause more issues by just jamming away on the starter. And in years past, I've also broken tabs off of blocks because the engine was locked and the starter wanted to go or you could jam a starter gear right into a flywheel or cause a whole bunch of other issues. Don't really have an option here unless I'm going to spend an hour taking the intercooler apart to get down there. So, unfortunately, I'm going to go ahead and just bump the key here and try to spin this over for a couple seconds. We'll make sure the starter works that way, the ignition or the key works, and also that the engine rotates freely. Now, before I do this, the guy should probably go ahead and check the oil here real quick you know I don't see any fire battery's been on for a while and there is a lot it looks like the dash under the Apollo in here and I ain't even kidding you it's got it's got Earl in it yeah mm-hmm 
Don't taste gas, don't taste antifreeze. It's got viscosity, plenty fine to spin over for a second. Or even if we get it running, we could probably run it on this for a minute. Okay, I'm gonna lean in, touch the key, and see what happens here. Keyage. Ooh, that didn't sound good. <laughs> Great news, the engine rotates. Starter works, but it didn't sound good. It was very unhappy. Could be some stuff packed in there from mice. Nope, Bendix is shot. So I'm not gonna crank on that. Well, I'm gonna crank on it as little as possible, put it that way. We gotta make sure we have fuel and spark before we beat that thing up. Now, unfortunately, when I rotate the key forward, I hear a relay click and no pump. And that's exactly what I was expecting. I'm gonna rock the key back and forth a few times and then we can pop the cap off on the fuel rail, see if we got fuel pressure on the rail and that's pretty much gonna confirm the pump's not running. Then we can start the digital troubleshooting. Yes, <laughs> I'm really excited. Oh, I just blew a rib out. Ouch, what in the world? So unfortunately, rocking the key didn't do anything. Jammed the size 13 into the tank 20 times. Nothing came to life. I did read through a schematical last night for about eight minutes until my brain hurt, which that only took about two minutes. But I took away some pointers of where stuff is at in this vehicle, like battery. That's a turbo. And then I knew I'd need a fuel pump relay. That's over here. And fan relays are over there and stuff like that. So I've got... The fuel pump relay out, I think. Keys rolled forward, I got power here. What I'm gonna to try to do is juice this live instead of just doing a prime. I'm gonna run this pump wide open so we'll be sending voltages to the rear nonstop and then I can crawl under and actually try to hear and listen and stuff like that because it's kind of tough doing some of this stuff by yourself. Guys pulling this down right now just so I can get up in here and Check all the fuses. We also see some aftermarket relay and wiring in here. Great. Another switch. But I'll check all of this out first and just make sure we're good here before we move on to that relay. Okay, I checked the injector fuse and the ECM fuse. These are good and then I also verified 12 volts. It's actually like 11.8. 8.7 because I've been sitting here with the key on for a while testing stuff. So all this is good here thus far. Now we can continue under the hood. What a mess. So I've been just kind of figuring this out. A lot of the wiring diagrams don't match. But I think this is supposed to be pink and black. That's constant 12 volt. Green and white, I think that's power from ECU. Tan out. I believe it's pump and then we got a ground. Relay seems to test okay. I could send power directly through here right off the battery with this little test lead thing. Still don't pump. So now I can come back here. Brake light switch is stuck on by the way. Got tail lips. That's pretty neat. The connector is right here. So what I can do this test that I'm getting power back here to this connector and then I could also take the battery out, set it on the ground and run power right to these leads. See if the pump works from here to there. Be a quick way to test the pump and the wiring. Uh, for example, if I have power here but there's still no pump or vice versa if I just wanted to test it. I don't know. We're test utilizing is what I'm saying. Glad this connector was right here because I really wanted to do this but I figured it would be up in there more so moving back here now I'm hitting three birds with one stone yeah and i'm using the ground that's running the pump to make sure that's a good ground and i got my light on and i'm testing the power from the front where that relay is that i'm sending 12 volts through so i'm definitely getting power back here to the pump so what i could do now is just clip these back together And I'm just gonna poke this power wire, I don't know, right about here, and just make sure that we're getting power through the connector. 
And if we've got power, we know the ground's good. The pump is, in fact, dead. And there we have it. Power to the pump, pass connector. Pump is, in fact, dead. Shoot. Just wanted to show you this. Just one step further in case a guy gets in the troubleshooting relays and whatnot. Now I figured out that one is 12 volt constant, one is 12 volt ECU power, which is basically when you're cranking, the computer says, well, I need to add fuel. Then it energizes that green and white wire, activates the relay, sends power to the pump. So when I crank it here, you can watch that red light come on over there. And off. So I've got a pump ordered and it came in actually really quick. It just came from a distro, I guess. I don't know if it's the right one. I'm just going off of PSI that I could find, which seemed to vary a lot. And the gallons per hour are all different and everything like that. So I'm going to have to take a gamble here. I'm going to run down and get that first, then come back, then we'll drop this tank. I'm going to be losing light here pretty soon. But I'd sure like to be able to say, hey, we got a fuel pump that turns on when the key cranks, at least. Maybe not the tank in tonight, but we'll do what we can. Well, the plan is, guy doesn't have one. I've got 41.3, nope, two minutes of daylight left. I got to hustle. What I'm going to do is get the car up on these plastic ramps down there. So, you know, can a guy get a little bit more room for the belly? Just scooch under there. I'm going to put one this way and one that way, opposing direction. I am still going to keep the jack under it, however, so when the car falls, emergency personnel can get me out faster, you know? Just thinking ahead. There's two nuts, tank ground, connector, boom, should drop out. Then I got to try to figure out how to get this precision. Of course, I just got the cheapest possible thing I could find. No idea if this is even going to work or if I'm going to be able to wire it in, but hey, it's what I got. OEM stuff for this. Not going to happen. Stop panicking, okay? Let's get to work. <sighs> So the other bolt is out. There's room behind the muffler to get that out. But this one, well, it's, you know, in the way. So I found a cat's paw over on the wall. I'm gonna do the right thing and just bend this as much as I can and try to get an extension back in there. You can, you can barely see it up there. That's what I'm going for. Great. Well, a guy just decided to snip these off. They're really crispy. I'm just going to replace them anyway. Feed, return, and vent. Not its first fuel pump. I got low pressure clamps and one original clamp. Those lines don't look too good, but the good news is the trunk floor is just spectacular. Really good shape. So that's nice. I haven't really looked under the rig yet. Looks like surface rust and the usual, but not too terrible. Well, let's get this old guy out, see what we're looking at. You ever need a shot of air and you don't have a compressor, just turn your carb or brake cleaner upside down. Make some wind. Clean that up best we can so we don't dump a bunch of stuff in here. It's fairly empty. And the good news is I don't hear chunk sloshing, but we'll be able to tell once we get that open. Okay, let's see. Gotta go this way. Hip -ass, hip -ass. Tanya Harding's a little big for the operation, but that's all right. Yeah. Wonder what Leon Rhymes is doing today. Probably not this. Yeah. Yeah. There we go. Come on out of there, you little stinker. Oh boy. 
stuff. Stuff and things. Whew. Man, she is ripe. Oh, please be decent. Uh, yeah, hey. I mean, boy. I've had a lot worse. I'll tell you that much right now. I think this is pretty salvageable. I mean, we got galvanized metal down there, fellers. A little bit of rust starting over there. And uh, I am starting to hear a little bit of rust. Of course, we're just moving it in ways it hasn't been moved in a long time. A couple chunks back there, see that? So, shake this out and clean it. We'll be good there. This guy, boy, I wish I had a bench grinder or angle grinder or something. This really needs cleaned up. Hmm. Well, let's see what I can figure out here. Up on the rented workbench here, Toyota Tacomas, whatever. It is what you'd expect, gutless. Working on this thing here, this is the old feller. Here's the new feller. I mean, we seem to be in the right territory, you know. It's a slightly different, making up some wiring connectors. It came with a bunch of different doodabs and dippies and whatever else. This one seemed to fit on there. Swung over the ground there, made this fitting, which should plug into this thing. Then it needs the sleeve, and that gets zip tied to the stem. The boot goes on, and I got to try to work this pickup sock off, which the new one didn't come with one. That's kind of disappointing. I'm going to clean that one out with carb cleaner. Then we'll throw some juice at this and just make sure it's running. And then we're also going to ohm out the float here and I need to get it floatalizing I gotta get some some sort of lubricant in there because it ain't really wanting to you know it's just gonna say full half now you're empty you know Bill Nye the science guy boy this looks like just an explosion about to happen if I'm being honest anyway we're gonna drop this in here I'm gonna fire it up again and just make sure that we got fuel going the right direction. You know, that would be, that would be nice. There we go. Picking up out of the bottom. Pumping out of the top, nice and strong. We got her going good. Now I can just pull that drain plug, let it go into this new drain pan, and then just put it right back in my jug. Pump is all complete. Guy will address all this stuff once I get it in the tank and secured. Just be easier that way. But that's looking pretty good. It did come with new tank o-rings, thankfully. And speaking of tank, it's time to address that. I've got to clean it out. I called Ken, the property owner, and we devised a plan to recycle the contents safely and according to outdoors stuff. You can see I'm losing sun here pretty quick. Let's get going. There. That's all done. Ready to go. Well, even though a guy started later in the day, still think, you know, we got some stuff accomplished here. Starter works. Engine rotates. Almost figured out the fuel system there. We're getting very, very close. Tomorrow, hopefully, we can hear this thing run by the end of the day. We got to figure out injectors lightning stuff like that and if we do then we could press forward for brakes transmission i don't know if it shifts all that stuff still got to figure out tires as well and don't forget i got 400 miles back home yet that's that's great see you bright and early tomorrow officially day two on the grand national here unfortunately it's late morning actually almost after noonish by this point I spent all day so far driving around Cincinnati trying to find parts for this thing, specifically brake parts. 
And as I thought, there it's unobtainium. They just it does not exist. You can find some rare examples of the Power Masters setup used unknown condition for like a thousand bucks on the Evil Bay and stuff like that. I don't know. It's a tough situation to be in. So I'm going to do the right thing and just pretend none of that happened. And we're going to go back to fuel and ignition system. Yesterday we left off, we got the tank semi cleaned up, 82.4%, give or take 0.62%. Got the new pump in, tested the pump. Now we just got to get this tank back up in the car. We can flush the fuel system here, check for leaks, and then we can move on to sparkles. Okay, where did I even put that tank? I don't know. Find it. Let's put that in. One thing I need to try to address is this here. You can see it got bent from the last guy that took the tank down and I had to bend it this way. That bolt goes right up in there. And well, it doesn't see, it doesn't, very, it doesn't bolt very good. So I'm going to take the Tanya Harding and just gently massage this. Let's see if I can make a little bit more room in there. Get these old crispy lines off. Uh, return, vent, feed, all of that stuff. Get all this plugged back in. Then I'll probably put some fuel in it, fire it up while the tank's on the ground, and just make sure we don't have any leaks, and we're actually sending fuel. And we're not going to do that very long, though. Just double, triple leach, you know, trust but verify. Can we do that before we put the tank up? Because, well, I don't want to do that again. All those lines are replaced. I'm using high pressure fuel clamps in here. Just, you know, let's be safe, pretty much. Uh, the feed one is green shield. It's actually rated to 250, it's overkill. Just want to be safe. The rest of this is standard fuel line, which is good to 50, but it's a return, which will never be at that, and then a vent. So this is kind of overkill there, but over here I got the clamps set to where they're gonna be on the bottom, all of them, because we don't have a lot of room between the tank and the stem coming out of the sending unit. So that'll be good there. Now we'll slide this fuel tank in. I got it over here on a dolly and get it rigged up. Fuel tank is in. I also verified before I hooked the lines up that key forward, pump runs, everything's good there. Time to dump some fuel back into this thing. I got five gallons of fresh fuel here. I'm also gonna put some Bireman B12 in here. It's a injector cleaner, fuel line cleaner, combustion cleaner, you name it. We're gonna try to flush the fuel rails and the fuel line. I'm sure it's got varnish in it. And I'm gonna do that up front here in a second, but the first five gallons here, it's got to pack a punch if we're going to actually do any cleaning. Unfortunately, unless we pull the injectors, a little bit of gunk's going to end up in them, but I don't know. Hopefully we can clean them up as we go, and hopefully none are stuck closed or really bad gummed up. So before a guy goes on ahead and brings the full pressures of the fuel into the system here, we need to try to flush this a little bit. Now, if we're doing this a bajillion percent correct, obviously, We'd pull the injectors out, bench test them, flow them, make sure they're nice and clean, then flush everything and put it all back together. So I'm gonna do the right thing and do none of that. Basically, I'm gonna take apart the fuel pump relay, jump it like I did yesterday. So the pump runs nonstop in the back. I'm gonna come up here and there's this Schrader valve right here. Normally has this cap on it, 99.86% of fuel injective vehicles have that. You can test your fuel pressure, push that in, fuel comes out hey you got fuels what I'm gonna do is just hold that baby open while the pump is running and we're gonna let the fuel just circulate and there's gonna be a bunch of varnish and stuff in there try to let some of that barium and fresh fuel skip across these injectors a little bit flush that varnish out give it the best chance to fire then I'll close the Schrader valve we'll let this thing build pressure there should be some rubber lines back here there's a transition from steel rubber here approximately back in the metal 
where we saw it hanging into the rubber lines I just put in back there. If we have no leaks, then we're gonna go ahead and check off fuel system. Then we can move on to ignition and probably need to check the injector pulse as well. But let's get this jumped and test this out. Okay, let's see. This side rigged up. Rig. Okay. Then hold the screwdriver in here. There comes fuel pressure. A lot of it. It's clearing up. It's looking good. Get some air out. That's good news. Okay, gonna let it pressurize. I just heard the return line. Looking good up here so far. Not seeing any leaks. Plenty of pressure, nice and clean. I also crawled under with the light. Don't have anything leaking there. Listen, shh, shh. she's percolating. Fuel system, done. Well, I think while I got the jack under the back here and these tires are basically in my eardrums and teeth, I'm gonna pop these off. I did find some tires this morning, so that's a good thing. And stopped in a shop, a couple, I don't know, buildings down here. They're gonna mount them for me. Probably just do two at a time. Well, cause that's, that's what I got, you know? So I'm gonna bust the rear off, throw them in the rental, run them down, get them started on that. While this is on jack stands or just hanging in the air, we'll start working through lightning system. Plan. Yeah. No? Yeah? Oh. I ain't quite got the right socketry for this. And yeah, it's gonna bite me. Huh. Well, I just met a good old boy a few houses down. He's got a 73 Corvette. Stopped and talked to him this morning. I'm gonna swing over to his house, see if he's got a socket I can borrow. It's three quarter of course, but I got a 97 tooth and it's just gonna tear these up or strip them. I wonder if Jody Messina knows how to change a tire. Probably, she's a country gal. Down here at Rick's garage, these guys are hopping. You got stuff lined up all over the place. Anyway, long story short, they're super, super busy. So I just said, hey, can I just change my own tires? I'll still pay you for it, using the machine and valve stems and everything. And they were like, yeah, sure, why not? So big thank you to Rick's. I'll roll these off, bust these tires, the old ones off, get the new ones on. Take them back down. Probably go ahead and just take the fronts off since we got this going on. Get them down and then the cars down on four new tires. That'd be nice. Of course, you gotta go with the Cooper Cabras. I don't know what size I picked. 235-6015. Got one on, boy, these are rotten. They were a fight getting off. This one probably could be plugged, but I'm gonna go ahead and replace it anyway. The wheels are pretty knocked up. Um, I'll show you once I get this one flipped over. It's got a pretty good ding in it. So this one here has been knocked around pretty good. Hopefully it's gonna hold air. I am going around these with some scotch right. See if we can get them to bite, you know. 
seems to be holding there. I don't see any bubbling yet. Boy, this wheel is beat up. I'm gonna have to get wheels. Well, that's looking a little bit better. Put these wheels on the back again because I think the reason they did that is they were the most beat up. Front ones look a little bit better. However, that's seized on there and neither front tire rotated at all. See the rust falling. It was beating on the wheels. Oh boy. I'm gonna pretend I didn't see that basically at this juncture. Just want to get these tires back on as quickly as I can. Focus on getting it running. That'll be a victory. Then we can maybe still see if I have enough time to get this thing down the road. Well, all four tires are on. Another thank you to Rick's. Nice folks, really nice folks. Looks way better. Still doesn't run. <laughs> That's fine. Well, I had the front end, you know, right up in the old teeth. Slid some ramps under the front. The guy's back. I'm being serious now. It's, it's getting, it's poor quality. It's getting pretty bad on me. This should be a little bit easier to crawl in here and find this little 3.8 liter. And if we're lucky, things progress how I want them to. We're going to be changing the Earl soon, so why keep, you know, jacking it up? Okay, we need spark. We know we got fuel, so I'm going to get in here and gently pull these lightning hoses off because no one in the world has another set. <laughs> That's fine. Guy could probably make, you know, a set if in need be. Wow, there's a lot of baby spiders running out of that one. Okay. I don't know why there's a tiny horn in here. Let's get the spark laters out, glance on them, and then I'm going to be shooting this, you know, penetrant lubricant into each cylinder with the straw so I can get it way on the back of the cylinder wall, let that run down and seat in those rings, lubricate it up really good before we crank this thing over anymore, and that'll soak while we're doing the spark laters. We need a spark later wrench. Split fires. Cranker side. They look great. Engine hasn't been leaned out. That doesn't tell me it's been rotted. It's just been scooted around, fat and happy. And the captain side is the same exact way. No mechanical damage. No major issue. Copied the gap on the new sparkulators. Ken stopped by for a minute, ran me an extension cord up to the bank, got me electro-digital power cord light now. We're moving up. You can hear the church bells. It's supper time. So we got new sparkulators in. I think we're going to do it the easy way. Just put an inline test light, and if that inline test light blinks, we've got spark, and that's going to save us a bunch of time testing the ECU and the coil and all of that other stuff. Then we'll have fuel, we'll have spark, and then the last thing we need to check quick is just to make sure the injectors are firing. Okay, listen now, I need your help. I don't got my Lone Wolf 6000 trigger with me, so I'm going to jump in and twist on the key, twirl the starter around. You keep an eye on this guy right here, and make sure that that thing blinks, and then, you know, we got sparkles. Okay, the guy's got all the lights turned off in the power bar in there, so you can see that light blinky doodab in there. It's right here if you lost it. Okay, just keep an eye on that. Gonna twirl on the key, you let me know what happens. Yep, yeah. Yep. Oh, we got a dead battery. Well, what do we got? What's going on? Yeah, I, I know the batteries. I don't know why the battery's dead. I guess tail lights have been running. I think that's what it is. Did the light blink? Is what I'm asking. Yeah, one time. Okay. Well, <laughs> that means we've got spark. We've got fuel. We've got spark. Quick test on the ejector. I can plug that fuel pump back in. And I think we're ready to see if this thing will, you know, it'll actually run. That would be neat. Truth went on ahead and be told, I've got another battery. 
just like this one because I had assumed something like this might happen and or the charging whirler ain't gonna charge so I'm just gonna pop this out quick put in the other one because we're gonna need it well not only to test the injectors but you know start it this is the well for Pete's sake so I have gently removed the injector harness here grounded my test light got the key on we can see we got we got power there so now I know one side's got power so now we're gonna check the pulse which actually makes the injector you know inject fuel into the engine so I grabbed a power source right here off the back of the charging whirler and then so that'll be positive so then we're looking for a ground up here got that jammed in now you're going to watch the test light again for me fellas because again i got to crank the key but this time we're looking for a green light bulb not a red red is hot green is ground so watch for a green bulb if that flashes might be pretty quick might be hard to see then we've got injector pulse and the injector harness is alive all right here we go key and firing Well, I could see that from back here. Well, that's going to do it for our basics. We hope it has compression, but we've got fuel. We've got spark. The injector harness is doing the thing. We're just hoping the injectors inject. I'm going to go plug this fuel pump in. It's finally time to turn this key and see if this Grand National will come to life after 20 years sitting. Just cleaning up a few odds and ends. Making sure we're good to go hot. Okay, well, that's in there. Got oil, we checked that earlier. Take this test light out of the out of the line here. We know we got spark. I'm excited. This is gonna be interesting to see what a multi-port fuel injected engine does after sitting for 20 years. A lot of you have asked for this. Do a fuel injected engine. Here, here we are. Okay. Turn the key, should hear the fuel pump prime. I did in fact hear that. Shouldn't have to touch the throttle. It's in park. Wow! Yes! Started immediately. It's already idled down. A little rough. It sounds good. Valve train sounds great. It built oil pressure immediately. I don't see any big leaks. This is crazy. Make sure the exhaust isn't restricted. Ooh, not much coming out that side. I think the muffler is a little bit plugged, but I'm hearing it exit the hole over there on the drinker side. Buick. They could engineer some stuff. We got smokage. A little bit of smoke here, but that's just years of that oil sitting on the exhaust manifold. Listen how quiet the alternator, the idler pulleys, just whisper quiet. Didn't even look in here. Oh, it's Oh boy, I don't know what kind of color that is. It's like moss, so we'll just put that on. Pretend we didn't see that. <laughs> it's alive, 20 years sitting. Buick Grand National sitting here idling really well, actually. I'm gonna let it just warm up a scoosh, then we're gonna go ahead and drop that oil. I want all that oil, all that sludge and old oil up top to get warm come back down to the pan, then we'll drop it and put some fresh oil in. There's really no 
reason to drop it immediately because you're gonna have a bunch of old oil sitting in the system. So this will help flush it a little bit better. After we do that, we can run it longer, see if it stays cool. We gotta make sure the head gaskets, gasket, and the water whirler whirls and doesn't leak. And you know the drill if you've been watching the show for a while. There's still a long ways to get out of the, through the bushes whatever the saying is, but we're making progress. It's alive. The cooling fan just kicked on. You might be able to tell by all the stuff blowing out of it. Nice. It's crazy how cold the intake pipe is. It's waking up. The guy was just testing the charger whirler. It's very, very weak. It's kind of putting out voltage, but that could be an issue. I might have to go pick one of those up, at least just to have it in the trunk. Because it's, you know, we got a lot of digital stuff this go around. We're gonna need that. This is not good. Low speed fan kicked on, startled the guy. I was uh, tracking the fuel line here, trying to figure out what's going on. But I'm glad that works. <laughs> That's the way it goes. Put in a new gate panel, that bowl is gonna go right at that thing. Leave the old one up, never even touch it. What I'm saying is, guys, thought we, I thought we were, it was running. Boom. Fuel line leak. That's the feed line, most likely. I'm pretty positive it is, actually. So, I'm going to do the right thing and ignore that for now because I'm just tired of working on the fuel system. Let's go ahead and get this oil changed now that it's warmed up, hot and ready. Drop that. And then we can lower the car on the one side and get this other side up so the Sasquatch can, you know, get under there and take a look at what's going on. Most likely just going to have to hack a chunk out rechunk it not sure guys got that pulled out nothing interesting came out of course i'm going to put a wix back in her here boy losing light again what in the... about roped myself <laughs> anywho turbo car here you know making boostesses and lots of heat stuff like that needs a special oil so I'm going to run this heavy-duty diesel oil, you know, the Rotella T4. It's got all the vitamins and dinosaurs a guy needs. Oh, yeah. Drink up, little buddy! Well, I know it's good. You're welcome. Well, here's the issue. And I, you know, I can't believe it, but I guess I got to. I'm looking right at it. The body mount is just gone. Like, there's a little bit left, but that needs replaced. Oh, and also, there's a leak there. Yep. 14 hours later, I ain't got the right tools, fellas. This armpit is full of fuel. Snip her off here, snip her off here. Now I'm going to get a brake line cutting or a pipe cutting tool clean this up over here likewise here run a new rubber line and then I think I might try to snip a filter in or maybe I bring it out here I don't know if I have some zip ties but it'd be nice to put a filter in this thing just you know to the, to be the cautious since well, you could probably tell because of the way that it is. It's actually the following morning. Last night I drank about 13 gallons of gasoline, ran out of high pressure fuel clamps, cut every single phalange that I own. By the time I got to the hardware store, I just said, look, let's shut it down for tonight. Got some clamps this morning, a couple other accoutrements to help out. Gonna get this fuel system done, 
tests out again, start the car up this morning, cold start, and check for any more leaks in the fuel, and then once again for the, I don't know, 13th time, fuel done. And then we got to figure out, you know, brakes, I suppose. That would be the next thing. And then lastly, you know, does this transmission work? <laughs> okay. I'd do transmission first, but we might just send her out into Joe's propane tank out here. And not a good way to start the morning. The guy is double flaring these because we got the HPs and the fuel pressures. So I don't want that to leak. Just using this little cheapy deal here. And hopefully the first time's a charm. If it's rotten in here, we got a leak, we're just gonna have to keep cutting it back, but it'd be nice to get this knocked out in one shot. Fuel system is, well, it's good enough for the girls we date to get us home anyway, and then we can doll it up. We're gonna fire up the car again and see if any of this leaks, and then we can move on. Oh, well, that's, that's great. It's actually leaking worse than before, but I got a filter in there now, so. That's great. The problem is, you know, it's that slippery slope. We made a cut, double flared it, now it's shooting out of the pinhole back here. So if I cut it here, it's probably gonna leak there. If I cut it there, it's gonna leak there. Actually, I can see fuel leaking back here. So I'm gonna have to chase this back as far as I can, try to get into some good line. The backside wasn't leaking at least. But this is a nightmare because there's a garbly goop of twists and turns, and then I believe it turns into rubber lines and then goes up into the block, does this, and then it shoots across and then goes in over there. And the rubber is so, you know, when all 48 horsepower get this thing rocking, there's some flexibility in there. But it goes through the frame horn down here, which makes it more difficult. So. Give me 17 hours, gonna roll around on my back, see if I can figure this out. Oh man, spicy potato wedges. That's what I had for breakfast. So, fuel system again, done. Fired it up for a minute, no leaks. Looking good there. Got to move on to the brakes. Now, as I've mentioned a couple times, the power master is, we ain't got one. You know, guy could probably get one, but you're going to pay an arm and a leg or you can get them rebuilt, but don't have the time. And of course, I didn't plan ahead. So here's what I'm thinking. This is basically a Regal with a turbo and stickers, right? Like, don't get your feelings hurt now if you got one. It's just, that's the base platform. So I picked up a traditional vacuum booster and a traditional master cylinder. I'm gonna to try to take all this out and put all that other basic stuff in. And I know the pedal geometry is not gonna be right, but is it good enough to get us brakes? That's the goal anyway. Is there a jet taking off? What the heck is that? The challenge is gonna be this doesn't mount as a traditional vacuum booster. Basically, the master cylinder has two bolts, goes into a plate. That plate has four bolts like a traditional vacuum booster, which mounts to the firewall. I've got to somehow get my Sasquatch body in the small car under the dash, above the pedal. There's a bolt that goes into the rod. i got to get that. Then the four bolts way up in there on the firewall. I'm going to try to take this assembly out as one big unit and try to save some time. Keep in mind, I still have 400 miles to get home. Today is, well, it's already mid-morning Saturday. I have to be back Monday morning for an obligation. I can't say what it is, but I have to be there. No exception. So I would like to be on the road late tonight or bright and early tomorrow. The scary thing is with one day traveling, if something happens to the car, that's, well, that's, you know, we don't have time to fix it. So I'm just procrastinating, as you can see. Here we, here I go, under the dash. Yes, 39.7 hours later. Blew my back out, 17 cramps. Can't feel my left leg, and I got about four pounds of insulation in my 
right cornea. But I got the four nuts off that hold in the thing that does the stuff. The rod is separated, like I said before, and I can't get it off the pedal, and I don't want to bend the pedal. So I'm going to try to remove this whole assembly, and I should be able to see the rod in there. I can move it around, get some juice in there, try to get that off. Well, allegedly, this should come off. Let's see what happens. Guy's been soaking on these, so luckily they're going to come right off. Not much juice left in this bad boy. Boy, this is a wonky setup. I guess when these fail, they fail, fail. And uh, it's not like losing vacuum and you still have manual brakes for whatever reason. When this vacuum pump goes out and you lose your vacuum, I guess it's like 5% brake left, if you're lucky. So this upgrade works. I guess I'll be happy with it. We'll probably eventually try to get this one rebuilt. You know, if in a guy could, or get the parts to rebuild it. My suspicion is the piston is stuck down. And that someone jerked the pedal up and separated the rod in here. So even if I got this freed up, the seals are going to be shot. Because there's obviously a reason it's sticking. Alright, got the digitals unplugged. One line is unplugged. I got more wires spraying everywhere. I mean, what have we got? Headlights on this? What are there so many wires for? That cable. What is this? Is this a speedometer? Why did they wrap that around here? Help me understand that one. You can't. I think I got more wires. There we go. That's what we're after. If you don't understand what you're looking at, don't worry. I don't either. See this rod right here? It's got to slide off that pin. And it's much easier to do it this way than laying under the dash. You got to think, this is, you know, we're, we're talking right underneath the column in there. And... I just, I, I don't bend, you know, like a guy used to. It's getting there. So here's what we got going on. Old power master system right there. This is that vacuum motor s system that builds pressure. And this is just an old school vacuum booster or power brakes, basically. We're doing some measurements here specifically from here to the center of that rod and here to here. This one is longer, quite a bit actually. Um, it's like four and a half there probably. That one's more like uh, three and three quarter. So in order to make sure that's gonna work, I had to come in here and set the pedal back as far as it could. I'm going off the back of that pin to the firewall here. It's about four and three quarter to the firewall. And if I do the same here, it's, I mean, pretty much right on the money. Well, a little bit shorter, which is good. So, Technically, theoretically, if everything works right correctly-ish, that should go into here and affix to the pedal. The other thing I've got to measure is center to center. See how this one is higher? And I've got to measure here as well. This one's probably perfectly centered. What I mean by that is... That's about two, and that's about one and a quarter. So the rod is higher here, meaning when this goes in the car, this rod is gonna be tilted down. Now, or excuse me, up, actually. So is that gonna throw the pedal geometry off a little bit? Yep, 
Are we going to have to make it work? Yep. If we're getting home. You couldn't even know. But I left and came back, actually. I noticed something else here. The pin. I don't know. Diameter, circumference, circle size. Between these two. Was not correct. So Rick's garage saved me again. I ran down there just like this. Used a step bit and a drill. I have neither. And just wallered her out a little bit to the exact specification of this one. In other words, I just eyeballed it and slammed a Christmas tree bit right through there. That looks pretty good and fragile. So now, let's try to stick that in, see what happens. So I'm back there fighting on the brake booster. And Ken shows up and says, hey, I brought you some motivation. He's got a Grand National too. His is slightly in better condition and when I say slightly 17,000 original miles original paint well original everything but tires it looks like right, right. Bumper fillers and tires are only let's check this thing out it is I'm actually scared to be this close look at this thing this is probably well, it has to be one of the finer specimens left. It's an 87. All original. 17,661 miles. And he was nice enough to drive it out here for us to take a look. Just incredible. I tried to get him to trade me wheels because I got new tires. But he said he would politely decline. Oof. I just, I can't believe it, but I'm looking right at it. Can you pop the hood for us here? Check this out. <laughs> it doesn't even make sense. That's what, that's what that's supposed to look like. Look at the stampings on the rubber boots, intake tubing. It's got all the stickers. Got your part number, serial number on the air-to-air -air intercooler. Incredible, beautiful machine. Look at the shock tower bolts and nuts. For Pete's sake. Would you sell it? Not right now. Not right now. <laughs> Eventually, maybe. Beautiful rig. Well, now we have some motivation. I don't know about getting it this shiny, but that's what it's supposed to look like. Terrible foreseeing news. I mean, you could have bet on it. The vacuum booster from a, you know, whatever, Regal doesn't match the pedal for this car and that's why they sell the vacuum booster the master cylinder and the pedal as a kit because well it just it doesn't work also great news i beat this one with a hammer for about 35 minutes i kept spraying it with some juice and i got the thing to pop out that was stuck and you know it shoots some juice it's not it's not great it's the only shot I have left to drive this car. So, we're backing up. Beep. 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 Put the other rod back in. I got a slide of cutter key in there. I got to lubricate it. We're going to try to put the power master assist is back in that I just beat with the sledgehammer for half an hour. And, uh, you know, see if that makes brake juice happen unlikely very well the good news is you know this is back in the power masters the not so good news the very first time I hit the brake pedal pop yeah you know that sound blue brake fluid all over the ground ironically in the same exact spot that the fuel line was leaking 
So now I gotta run back to the Hardmore store, get a bunch of brake fittings and doodabs and dip dahs and whatever. If we stand a chance of bleeding these brakes, gotta have the rears. But the, we got pedal action. So nine hours later, we're making progress. Nope, losing light again. Tomorrow's travel day. <laughs> Great, feeling feeling really good about feeling really good about this purchase. Thirty-seven point nine years later, brake lines replaced. Copper clad steel, brought her up here. If I would have had this fitting in my assortment from the ABC parts store, I would have went all the way up, but I didn't have that one. So that's why that union there, but this should work. At least it'll get us home, and then we can assessalize the situation. So, uh, you know, built some pressure in the brake system, and uh, here's where the other leak was. That's uh, that's a new leak over there now. <laughs> that's neat. Second juice pipe in. This one goes all the way back to here now. So let's try her again. It'll probably burst, you know, somewhere back there, but it's worth a shot. Let's see what this one does. You never know. I mean, this is why Warren G won't hang out with me anymore. Never got any brakes, you know. Anyway, 17 juice pipes, 48 fittings, 97 barrels later, six gallons of brake fluid. I think, I think we got the leaks under control. Now, I'm gonna jack up the rear, get that on jack stands, start cracking valves, snap them off in the wheel cylinders so then we can fight getting the drums off to replace the wheel cylinders. And when I try to do that, I'll snap the brake lines going to the distribution block or the axle, replace all that, not be able to find a rubber line. I don't know what we're gonna do there. And then redo basically all the brakes from the juice pipe back. Or, you know, we might just be able to bleed them in the rear, but let's be honest, when is that? When has that ever happened? Welcome to No Brakes Garage. <laughs> yep. Brakes are finally bled. Cars back on the ground for the first time in a couple days. Tires are still in there. That's neat. Summary of the last couple days. It's been a battle royale. And I ain't kidding you. Fuel pump, clean the tank. Fuel lines, got that back in. Sparkulators, we have the Test the injectors, fuel pressure, all that stuff. Battery, tons of wiring. I had to remove an alarm system, which I didn't even really mention. We put new tires on this thing, obviously. Replaced brake lines. Tried to replace the master cylinder with a different style. Didn't work. Got the other one working, put that back in. Blood the brakes. It's running. No idea if it goes into gear yet, but we're losing daylight, and I'm just ready to jump in this thing and just... Can we drive it? I think I'm about to that point. So I'm gonna jump in this thing, turn the key fired up, see if it'll move under its own power for the first time in 20 years. All right. Oh, this does have tilt. I thought it didn't for some reason. Reverse. Yep. Drive. Oh yeah. Trying not to just completely destroy it on this lip here. Easy. <laughs> there we go. Can't see nothing, but we're driving. 20 years. Oh yeah, I can hear the turf ski. Ooh, spinning out a little bit, you know. Don't want to tear.
here up Ken's Lawn. Brakes. Oh no. What happened here now? The brake pedal just stuck to the floor. And it ain't coming back. That's that's wonderful. I don't know if I blew another lion or what happened here. I got no brakes. <laughs> that's weird. Well, fellers and fellets, guy thought I blew another brake line. Clambered all through this thing. Nothing's leaking. Unfortunately, the original power master brake master cylinder has again seized. And I'm thinking it's having something to do with that electric vacuum booster thing. It's clearly failed. I'm kind of out of options. It's extremely, ultimately rare that I throw the towel in, but this is one of those cases. I just don't have the time. And most importantly, I don't want to have the parts. I'd swap it tonight if I had a new power master brake master cylinder or a swap kit, but I don't. But I'm still calling this a victory. After 20 years, we've got this 1986 Buick Grand National up and running, and we did drive it. Drove it around the yard. Seems to run fantastic. And of course, stay tuned. You're going to see this car back again. We're going to make these brakes right and we're going to be driving this thing. As always, thanks for watching. Appreciate you very much, and we'll see you very soon. Okay, now what? U-Haul trailer? Probably. Great, that's cheap. Nope. <laughs>